Well, thank you for coming. I don't think there's a person in this room today who's not aware of the current road toll in South Australia. In fact, I'd suggest that most members of our community um, of driving age are talking about, at some point, the road toll. 73 people so far this year have lost their lives on South Australian roads, compared to 43 for the same time last year. That's an extra 30 people have died in South Australia as a result of bad decisions on our roads. From those 30 people, we know it affects so many more. And we have an example behind us today of some of the people who are affected by bad decisions on our road that lead to fatal consequences. We have emergency services workers who attend the scene of fatal crashes and have to recover bodies and deal with the carnage. We have the close family members of those people. We have nurses, paramedics and doctors. And we have social networks, colleagues, friends, all affected by death on our roads. If we do a simple extrapolation of the 73 deaths we've had this year, we know that there are about four to 5,000 people in a close network around those people who are directly affected by their deaths. And if we go even further than that, looking at the trend so far this year, we are looking at maybe another 55 people losing their lives on South Australian roads before Christmas as a result of bad decisions, decisions related to the fatal five. As police, we are frustrated and concerned about the road toll and the impact it has on the community of South Australia. And we are acutely aware of our obligations to monitor driving behaviour and hold people account for their driving behaviour. To ensure that we're doing our part to reduce the road toll and keep people safe, today we are launching a new road safety operation called High Impact Fatal Five. We will be putting additional resources into road safety policing, ensuring that drivers on South Australian roads and other road users are accountable for their behaviour and aware of their obligations when using our roads. We're also hoping that we're, we're able to stop people for breaching the road rules and committing offences against the Fatal Five, that other people who are driving past or in the, in the area will see our activities and be reminded of the fact we're out there holding people accountable for what they do on our roads. And I want that message to go home. I want that message to go home to the people they care about. I want them to go home and talk about the fact that they saw the police doing their job. They saw the police stopping people who were not wearing seatbelts, speeding, drinking and drug driving, driving dangerously, being distracted by the mobile phone or any other type of distraction. I want people to have conversations with the people they care about so people think about the way they use our roads. The road rules are there to ensure that we can all get home safely from our journeys. If we comply with the road rules, we dramatically reduce the risk of being involved in a fatal or serious injury collision. As police, we make no apologies for holding people accountable for the behaviour on the roads, and that's what we'll be doing over the next month. We are dedicating resources to road safety policing. We are going to be stopping people for their driving behaviour and we are holding them account for what they do on the roads. We must remember that the decisions we make in a car can have fatal consequences. If you decide not to wear a seatbelt, it may kill you. If you decide to speed, you may be killed. People who are distracted may find themselves being killed in a fatal collision. If you drive dangerously or drive like an idiot, you may be killed. People need to stop and think about what they're doing when they are using our roads. Are there any questions? There were two fatalities yesterday. Are any of these fatal five a cause from that? Uh, yesterday's collision was a tragic collision resulting in the death of two people. There was some commentary that the dust storm caused the collision. Let's be clear about this. Weather conditions do not cause crashes. The decisions people make in those conditions are what contributes to a collision. And in this case, you may attribute it to dangerous driving, distraction, failing to recognise the conditions and drive accordingly. And we encourage everybody to understand their abilities and the circumstances they're driving in and drive to the conditions. We're hearing though that people could see the three metres in, in front of them. So the, the weather definitely didn't have anything to play in causing Airlines don't let pilots take off when they can't see. If airports are fogged in or let weather conditions prevent safe flying, planes don't take off. What makes us think we can continue to drive on our roads if visibility is down to zero? If zero is the, the extent that you have visibility, then zero is the speed you should be doing. Drive to the conditions. It's a simple message and it's something that every responsible person using our roads should be aware of.
when we have statewide conditions that impact on drive, driver safety, it's impossible for us to close all roads. The obligation sits with people who are using our roads to do so safely, and that includes taking into account driving conditions. It's a foolish and reckless decision to continue driving when you're not able to do so safely, whether it be through torrential rain, dust storms, fog, whatever it might be. If visibility is low, then people need to make sound decisions about what they're doing behind the wheel. A bad decision will result in a fatality or a serious injury. Uh, we're still con we're still continuing to investigate the collision. As you can imagine, it's a, a horrific scene being responded to by police and other emergency services workers, and there's a lot of examination to be undertaken. What I am saying is, every collision that occurs on our roads, primarily a results as a result of a bad decision by someone using a vehicle. In this case, those decisions related to a choice made to continue driving or driving in a manner which was not consistent with the conditions. So a dust storm does not cause vehicles to crash. It's the decisions of the drivers driving in those conditions. You mentioned before the impact that would, you know, have a big scene like that in our research facilities. Um, how are the emergency services that respond to that crash yesterday? How are they? Well, they're all professionals. Um, they're all trained to undertake those duties and they do so as, as professionally as they can given the, the circumstances they're dealing with. But it's also worth remembering that uh, time and time again police officers, uh, fire officers, SES, doctors and nurses are confronted with carnage from road crashes and even if they are coping in the circumstances of each individual crash, each one of these things has a cumulative effect and it must live with these particular professionals uh, for much longer than just the scene of a collision. And we, we, we do our best to look after our uh, members, but uh, it is a reality, it does have an impact. There were a number of family members um, of the victims of yesterday's crash who attended the funeral. How are they feeling? How are they feeling? Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but oh, I think that's a ridiculous question. Um, these people have just lost, lost a loved one. Uh, their friends have lost someone. The last time they spoke to those people, the last thing they thought of was that they'd be going to a funeral for their loved one. Of course they're devastated by that and we feel for the families. Um, any loss on our roads is a tragic loss, but I just need to remind people that these vehicle collisions, the resulting in fatalities and serious injuries, come down to bad decisions associated with the fatal five. And we're encouraging people to think about themselves and their families when they're using the road. It's a continuing reinforcement of the message um, and that's part of our obligation as police is to uh, try and have an immediate impact on driver behaviour. We, we closely monitor the road toll and our serious injury statistics and uh, as I said I think everybody's aware of the dramatic increase this year compared to last year. Uh, we want to do what we can to try and turn that around and uh, reduce the level of uh, fatalities and serious injuries on our road and we'll do that through enforcement and education. Um, these posters are another way of reminding people of uh, the decisions they make and, and the need to be aware of those risk factors on our roads. These are the same messages we've been saying for decades, um, but it's not that we can stop saying them. We have to keep reminding people and finding different ways to uh, refresh that message so people pay attention and perhaps increase their level of awareness. And my hope is stop and think about the decisions they make when they're behind the wheel or using any other vehicle or even walking or riding on our roads. Given this dramatic increase of fatalities on our roads and the timing of the Motor Accident Commission, is it time to bring the Motor Accident Commission back? Uh, look, South Australia Police has been given the responsibility for the marketing and communications around road safety. This is a simple uh, example of uh, that continuing work. There's been no uh, break in the level of road safety communications within South Australia since the Motor Acc Accident Commission ceased. Uh, we've been funded to undertake that work. We have actually brought people over from the old Motor Accident Commission who now work for the South Australia Police and they're continuing to do excellent work in that space. And I'm quite confident you'll see a continuing uh, uh, communication around road safety and enforcement uh, through that, that group of people and, and the work we're doing now in SAPOL to take over from the Motor Accident Commission. So Other questions, please. Other questions, please. So why then are we going seriously backwards in terms of well, it, it's very difficult to pinpoint any, any causes for uh, 
the, the vehicle collisions we're seeing that result in fatalities in South Australia. Uh, we analyse every crash. Um, there is no specific trend that we can identify that would enable us to target uh, a specific type of activity. But each of those collisions come back to uh, poor decision making around the fatal five. Uh, the alleged offender is accompanying police today to the crime scene for a further uh, examination of that scene. He's assisting with inquiries at this point in time and uh, we may have more to speak about in relation to that later on today or tomorrow. Just on another matter as well, sorry, the um, arson attack of June at Marston by the assault, was that linked to the um, arson attack on Suzanne yesterday? Uh, we're examining the arson attack on the gymnasium and we're continuing to investigate the uh, food van arson attack as well. Uh, one of the aspects of our inquiry is in relation to any linkages between those two incidents. Um, we'll have further information about that as the investigation unfolds. So you're investigating into the biking links there? Absolutely, we are looking at those aspects. Should people be concerned if there's two sort of biking related arson attacks in two days? Is this, you know, concerning that there might be a war brew? Um, Clearly that's one of the things we have a look at. Uh, we have a very strong enforcement in relation to outlawed motorcycle gangs and the legislation in South Australia has given us uh, significant powers to suppress their overt activities within the community and uh, have a negative impact on community safety. So when we see incidents like this that may be linked to OMCGs, we take that seriously and we have dedicated officers who are currently working on that.